Greg Troutwine. I'm with Maritime Reporter TV. We're here at the Workboat 2016 in New Orleans, and we're here with Rich, Rich Marriage, the president of Advanced Mechanical Enterprises. Rich, thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. And um, this is, uh, you know, this, this is exciting to be part of your new video uh, program here. Well, again, we appreciate it. I know, you know, we've worked together many times over the yeah. years on different articles, and uh, I know you bring a high level of uh, technical expertise to this industry, so we appreciate your time. So, Rich, just, uh, just to start it off, give me a concise explanation of what AME is, what do you do, who do you do it for? Okay. AME is a, um, is a company that specializes in diagnostics and repair of rotating machinery, okay. and we try to use the latest technologies to perform these tasks. Okay. So uh, things like vibration analysis, ultrasonics, and uh, we're very heavily into laser alignment as well. Okay. You know, so all, the, all those kind of uh, things to make machinery run better and more reliable. Okay, Rich, I know you're, you're based in Fort Lauderdale, correct? Yes. Okay, and how many people are you and wh what's your area of operation? Uh, we're, we're Fort Lauderdale based, but we, we travel worldwide. Um, we've had jobs uh, over the, in Europe and everywhere else, and um, uh, we've even had a job in Tahiti. Okay. And uh, we, uh, we are a small firm, uh, less than 20 people, okay. but we're growing. Okay. And we're always looking for good candidates. Obviously, in the pages of Maritime Reporter and Maritime Reporter TV, uh, the maintenance of diesel engines is a hot topic. Yes. You know, obviously, that's uh, the number one operating cost. It's where money can be made and money can be lost. Right. Can you just uh, discuss with us the evolution of diesel engine maintenance in the maritime sector? Sure. Diesel engine maintenance um, has been traditionally based on running hours. Okay. And also, uh, they've also recently started using fuel, fuel metering as a, as a way okay. of uh, maintenance, okay. calendar-based, time-based maintenance, okay. and um, that's that's been traditionally what the diesel, in, you know, the industry has been doing. Okay. And now, specifically, how how is that changing today? And what we're what we're introducing is we have a product from a company called Windrock. Okay. It's it's been around over twenty years in the oil and gas business. Okay. It's a well-proven product. Mm -hmm. um, we're introducing the Model sixty four hundred. Okay. which is a fourth generation uh, product from okay. from this company Winrock and uh, we're we've been we're one of the companies that's been using it and applying it in the marine industry based on our background and expertise. Okay. So that's the that's the new Winrock model 6400. So if you can just give uh, uh, an overview of what's improved about it, and I guess more importantly, obviously you're going out there in the field, you're working on people's diesel engines, yeah. you know the marine industry, their diesel engine is uh, kind of like next of kin to them, oh, so uh, um, what is it about the Winrock Model 6400 that gives you the competitive advantage and also uh, works well for your customers? The Winrock Model 6400 is a very powerful condition monitoring tool. Okay. And what it does is it takes phased data mm -hmm. from each cylinder. Okay. It's time to top dead center. And what we're doing is we're getting a photo, an EKG of each cylinder individually. Okay. So we're able to see um, vibration, ultrasonic, and we'll get a firing pressure trace as well. Okay. And from that, by time, you know, knowing where it is in the, in the combustion cycle, mm -hmm. in, in the engine cycle, mm -hmm. And what degrees at what at what uh, you know what's supposed to be going on at that yeah. at that event, uh, intake valves closing, exhaust mm -hmm. valves opening. We can see very specifically how the engine's performing. Okay, okay. and obviously we've we've talked about condition based monitoring. Um, it's changing. Um, when we were just chatting briefly, you said uh, the the advent of condition based monitoring is still in its infancy, yes. but. What do you see as the big impetus for change? Why are companies, why are marine companies going to condition-based monitoring for their critical assets? Well, condition-based monitoring makes sense. It's, it's a, you're, you're, you know, the old adage, don't fix, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay. So um, what, we're, what we're doing is by, by doing a very detailed assessment on an engine, mm -hmm. Um, we're able to see how that engine is running, okay. how the engine is performing, mm -hmm. and um, what 
if any deficiencies exist at that time. Okay. okay. And so the technologies that we're using, um, you know, ultrasonics is very powerful for picking up fluid mm -hmm. and gas leak issues. Okay. Vibration, accelerometers, and velocity transducers, mm -hmm. they're very good at mechanical defects, such mm -hmm. th things such as bearings mm -hmm. or gear mesh problems, you know, water pump timing gears, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. Um, we can pick up those issues before they become a problem. Okay. So the clients that you're dealing with today, um, are they generally accepting of this new technology? Or I guess what, what do you think is going to be ultimately the, the, the piece that pushes them over to the condition-based monitor? I think, you know, we've gone in and, and really um, we've been able to diagnose problems mm -hmm. that um, others were, were unable to find using okay. more traditional methods. Okay. And I think more and more of those cases where we go in and survey and are able to identify issues mm -hmm. that were using traditional methods not able to be picked up, okay is going to prove out the technology. And you know the marine business is very slow in accepting new new uh, ideas and concepts. Okay. And, you know, but we're starting to see that it's coming around. And okay. the OEMs are also part of this. They're, okay. they're bringing out, they're rolling out their own condition monitoring programs. Mm -hmm. So it shows a general industry awareness of condition monitoring in the, let's not open up the patient unless we have to. Rich, finally, you're, you're a small company, uh, you're a technical company, uh, you, you founded this company. What is your number one challenge to being an efficient, uh, profitable company in today's maritime environment? Well, I'm sure I'm probably going to echo what a lot of my associates in this industry. It's, it's really, um, we have the tools and we're, we're you know, we really... Um, are um, very proud of what we've done and we really you know like the fact that you know we're leading edge with the technology mm -hmm. and we're always looking for the latest you know thing to apply to this industry to make things better but it's it's challenging to find good help okay. you know that's that's okay. been one of the more challenging issues and um, we know they're out there yeah. but you know sometimes you have to kiss a, a few frogs before you find the prince right very good. But no, we've uh, you know we have a really solid team now, and I'm very proud of our guys. And uh, you know we we really are um, the company is is selling and advancing, and you know we want to be a good place to work, and we treat our employees as best as we you know we really think we try to be ahead of the curve on mm -hmm. how we treat our employees. And uh, I, I like to uh, think that you know um, South Florida is a nice place to live, so that's one of the things that we're um, most challenged by, to be honest. Rich, thank you very much for your time. I truly appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of the show. Thank you, sir. All right.